OK, so to get us started, this week our big debate centres on Celtic's current transfer strategy and specifically on the first two high-profile names who are now being allowed to leave Ange's squad. So the question for today is this. Josip Juranovic has now left Celtic to join Union Berlin and it looks like Georges Giacomakis may also be on his way out of the club in the coming days. A lot of fans are upset at the decision to allow these players to leave, especially as both came in initially on five-year deals less than 18 months ago. So the question for you guys tonight is... Are you disappointed by the exits? Should we have fought harder to keep them? Or do you see this as smart business by the club in both cases? James, your initial response to that before we get into it in a bit more detail. Uh, you never like to see talent leave the building. You know, that, that's a, a, a good place to start. And uh, both of those players are big favourites of mine. And they both had a huge contribution to us being so successful in Angie's first season. Um, some things are against them. Age, um, attitude wasn't great. From certainly Juranovic, maybe a wee bit Jack and Marcus. We've heard things about training ground stuff and and that type of thing. Um, but this is the machine, this is the model. Um, I think if these guys were 22, 23, Celtic would have went, yeah, give them the dough and we can see, you know, we know the, tra- the trajectory they're on, or take the offer. There's rumours about Matt O'Reilly in the summer and stuff. That'd be big money because totally different profile. So if you were to put them in Matt O'Reilly's age bracket, it's, it's different numbers, so I'm I'm very relaxed about it. You know, certainly Juranovic has been replaced. It looks like Jackamakis will be by tomorrow or the day after. Celtic is, you know, we're actually a lot of fans are upset or worried or anxious about this because we're long in the tooth as to how Celtic do, you know, this kind of business. Sell them, do nothing, wait till the end of the transfer window, sign a loan player till the end of the season, and then see where we go from there. I've said this a few times, it's not like that anymore. It's just not like that. We've got the guys in either just as they're going out the door or well before they're bedded in. So as long as Celtic are doing their business like that, nothing to worry about. Yeah, I think what you're saying is we've been stung by Celtic before. I've been hurt before (laughs) many, many (laughs) times. So we know what it feels like. We'll get into this in a a bit more detail just in a second because there's various factors that play into the case with these two guys and reasons why I think it... Potentially as a very good call to let them go. But Joe, before we get into it in the, the detail, what's your general take on it? The right move to let them both go? Or do you have any reservations? Well, I think so. Um, if a player's not happy, they shouldn't be here. Um, and I think that is Angie's sort of policy. It, he's not wanting to keep unhappy players. He's not going to try desperately hard to change their mind. Or, you know, I remember ask, I actually asked him before. And I think it was after the Aberdeen game I'd asked him. And what I think it's been asked quite a lot since, but what we've sort of asked him, what would you do to keep your squad happy? Because he's got a big squad, he's got a talented squad. What would you do in that regard? And he says, why should I make the effort to keep him happy? Because they're playing for Celtic Football Club, they're playing at a big club. They should be happy to be here and they should be motivated to be here. And as long as they're doing that and they're good enough, then I want to keep them. And if they're not, then they can find a move elsewhere. I think it's a, a good shout because, you, I mean, you shouldn't really have to fight too hard to to keep somebody motivated at Celtic Football Club, should you, James? And it's it's funny in the case of Jack and Marcus because we're by far the biggest club in his career and will finish the biggest club in his career wherever he goes f- from Celtic. Good luck to him and all that stuff, but it's a step down and whether it's Jack and Marcus or anyone else that finds himself unhappy for any reason, Andrew's right to an extent. It's not his job to keep these guys happy. They should be, they should feel privileged to be at Celtic. Yeah, but there's a financial reality comes into it for these guys because they're both very similar profile that they're late bloomers. You know, they're both, what, 28? This is the biggest stage they've got to. They're not on the biggest wages. And if someone's going to offer them something silly for a four or five year contract, take them into the kind of twilight of their career, then, you know, we'd all do the same. You know, maybe not as Celtic fans, but if we were in a club that wasn't our, our club, then I think it's perfectly reasonable for them to take that move. Um, so, nah, I don't, I don't really have any, any problem with it. In terms of being motivated to to be happy at Celtic, you know, there's there's been chances, maybe less so for Juranovic because it's a different position, but Jack and Max has come off the bench many, many times a season, and if he wants to take a jersey off of uh, Kyogo, you know what you need to do, and he didn't do it. It's as simple as that. So, I think even if he had done it, the age profile, you know, niggling injuries, all these things, I don't think Celtic were looking to offer him big bucks anyway but in terms of getting first team football every footballer in the planet 
knows how to get that play better than the other guy. Yeah. You've mentioned the the profile of the players and we'll go through them just individually. I've got kind of fact file, if you like, on Juranovic first and then we can get to Jackie Marcus. But age-wise, so he's 27, nearly 28. And Andrew's quoted as saying, listen, he's 28. He's not 28. Wikipedia tells me otherwise. So he's 27 at the moment, 28 in the summer. Signed from Legia Warsaw uh, on a five-year deal on the 24th of August 2021 for two and a half million. He's now left to join Union Berlin, seven and a half million initially, as you say, James. So three times your money, potentially up to four times your money, 10 million pounds. He's had 53 appearances for Celtic, scoring six goals. How many of them were penalties, Joe? Five. Correct. Uh, one out of one. So, yep, five of those six goals were penalties. Highlights, of course, being the fact that he's a League and League Cup winner, scoring goals in the Europa League against Real Betis and Bayer Leverkusen from the spot. I mean, Joe, you've mentioned before you're, you're fond of a player like Juranovic, but you can see the bigger picture of why he, he's moved on, can't you? Of course. And looking at his career before, I mean, he's had a spell in Croatia, he's a spell in Poland, that it's maybe he's looking for that last payday and you're not a footballer forever. You've, I mean, realistically, he's got about another five or six years to get that move away. And even then, this could be his best chance to do so. Um, if he's For as long as he's playing for Croatia and his first choice, he's always going to be, and obviously for as long as Croatia are playing well, he's always going to have that platform to kick on. But the football's, I mean, all it could take is for a, a serious injury and that could be him. So in that position, you need to take your chance. Yeah. And yeah, I think that definitely is a right move. Union Berlin as well are a side on the up. So they're currently third in the Bundesliga, I think. He's obviously going to get Joint a, second, I think. Is that right? He's going to get a big signing on fee. He'll improve on the wages he's currently getting at Celtic. It's an hour from Zagreb on the play and all these kind of things. You know, there's a lot that plays into it. And I think the biggest factor is it's his last big payday, his last big move. He could get injured in training tomorrow and all these kind of things play into it. I think the quotes from Andrew are really interesting. So I've got a quote here, um, if you bear with me. It's a few paragraphs long, but it's, it's really interesting in terms of his take on it. He says, I don't think there needs to be winners and losers out of this. I can't question Josip's contribution. He's been fantastic. Josip has absolutely loved his time here and he'll remember it fondly and he gets an opportunity to do further things in his career and for his family. He's been a really popular member of the dressing room. He's been a key contributor last year to what was a very, very important season in the context of what happened the season before. With all of the lads, I'm constantly in dialogue with them about themselves and their careers and people have to appreciate Josip is 28 years of age. He's not, he's 27 inch. Uh, and he hasn't really got to the highest level until late in his career. He just wants to maximise his opportunities. To be honest, I agree with him. That's what all of us have in our careers, a limited time and we want to take opportunities. He leaves here as a fantastic player and as somebody who contributed to what was a really important season. I certainly wish him well and I hope he goes over there and kills it. He's very well respected within our dressing room and will be missed, but that's the nature of football. James, what do you make of those quotes in general? It's just Ange all over, just the humanity of the man. You know, it doesn't need to be, you know, football can get into situations where it's self, save me from a Celtic hell and all these things. It never needed to be that way and Ange managed that, that it never became that way. The, we've all discussed just here, you know, in the last five minutes, the reality of the situation and the reality of the finances of a footballer of that age. And if he can get that move that gives him a bit more financial security, he should take it. And Ange has covered it all there, all that and, you know, how... Well, he regarded he was not just in the dressing room by himself, how he contributed to their success. I, th- I, th- I caught that kind of Saturday or so, that interview. It was just Ange all over. Yeah, I, I think it, there's various very interesting, you know, lines within the quotes, but I think the very first line, I don't think there needs to be winners and losers out of this. Yep. Some fans are a bit upset. I don't think there's any reason to be upset. I think this is, this is just football in the modern game. And to a huge extent, everybody wins here, Joe. You know, we've you know, trebled if not more uh, in terms of our outlay on this player. He's had a brilliant season. He's been a great performer. He's been part of a, a dressing room which needed success quickly and he certainly played his part in that. And he now moves on, you know, to pastures new and picks up, you know, decent money for doing so. It just makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It does. Um, you know, from the club's perspe- perspective, we have, we've reinvested that money and from what I've seen of Alistair Johnson so far, I'm impressed by him, but we've also got a really good right back in it in the Ralston. And we've got options there. We don't really need... It's not as if we're losing a massive part of the squad that's going to be really difficult to replace. We've got some two guys that can step up. And from the club's perspective, OK, five-year deals, they were sort of signed long-term, but he's come in at a really crucial time that we needed somebody to step up, and he has. And all the best to him. He's done his, he's done his bit, and, you know, happy for him to move on. Yeah. 
So we'll look at it in just a second as to what it means to the, the squad overall, but I, I certainly get, you know, get the vibe here from us three in the room. No hard feelings. You know, it's, it's all good. Not. It's football and you move on. In terms of Jack and Marcus, so nothing confirmed just there, but it would seem imminent that he'll also follow suit in the next few days. And, and it's the kind of thing that could potentially be happening right now while we're on air here. Um, his profile, though, is very similar to you say, James. He's genuinely 28 years of age, which is one thing. He signed from VVV Venlo uh, on the 31st of August 2021, last day of the transfer window, same day as Carter Vickers and Jota. A big day for Celtic, might I add, to get all three of them in. Uh, and again, he cost around about two and a half million. The big suggestion is he's either going to go to Japan to Aruba Red Diamonds or Atlanta United in the MLS for a fee somewhere around about four million, maybe somewhere between four and five. Um, similar appearance numbers to Juranovic. He's got 57 appearances for Celtic and 26 goals in that time. So not far off a goal every two games. Some big highlights for Jack and Marcus. So he's obviously a league winner, uh, as was Juranovic. He missed the League Cup final through injury and he's actually missed quite a lot through injury and we'll get to that. He scored two hat-tricks for Celtic, one against Dundee, one against Ross County, both last season. He's got his Champions League goal uh, on his CV now, so he scored against Shakhtar at the end of the campaign this season. And he was Scottish Premiership joint top scorer last season with 13 goals alongside Reagan's Charles Cook. Fact for you, Joe, Celtic never lost a game where Georges Giacomakis scored, so he's played his part in then some. Where are you at on this one, James? Is it a, very much a similar approach, even though we're quite light up top at this moment in time? Yeah, I mean... The cover has to be in before the end of January and, and sooner, preferably. Um, I'd, I'd much rather a situation like Johnson Juranovic, and I think we're almost going to get that. Um, so very, very similar to Juranovic. I'm, I'm very relaxed about it, and very similar in terms of how much I liked him as a player and how important he was to us, us last year. You know, without Jack and Marcus and that close to the season, January to May, it'd have been really, really sticky. I don't think we win the championship without Jack and Marcus last year. So a really important player for us. This is just the game, you know. Yeah, I think you said the really accurate line last last week. No Jack and Marcus, no league title. That's what I see, and I think that's you know that still applies. Uh, Gus Poyet was out speaking uh, in the last few days, so he's obviously his national manager now at Greece. Poyet, for those who don't remember him, is ex Chelsea, ex Uruguay, real hard to compete at himself. And he says Georges is a strong character. He likes to play football. He gives you a hundred percent all the time. That's why he's so popular with Celtic. He's got better in front of goal and scored a few goals. But this season he wasn't playing regularly. He felt he wanted to play. At first I heard it was this team in Japan he was going to sign for. Now I hear it's the team in the MLS. I always tell any player when they ask for my opinion that they have to make good decisions. The more good decisions you make in your career, the better your career gets. So I don't think there's any doubt he's off schedule and it, it remains to be seen as to, to where, it be, where it will be. But again, it's it's just one of these things that it makes a lot of sense. It does. Um, and I know, I think James had touched on it last week about I actually thought that Celtic should have signed a striker on top of Giacomacchus as well. Um, and that was my uh, initial thoughts going out in the window because given the situation we were in last year, Kyogo and Giacomacchus were both injured yeah. coming to sort of tail end of uh, the calendar year. A bad up front. A bad up front. It's St. Johnson, I think Joey Dawson come Joe, on as a yeah, sub. Joey Dawson, no less. Um, so obviously, thankfully, Maida came in just after that. But I, I think we were sort of short in that position anyway. But... Given the reports we hear, he's maybe not happy with his minutes and, again, the policy of Ange not keeping players that aren't happy to be there. And, again, a great servant in terms of the goals he's contributed, but good riddance and we move. <laughs> <laughs> great, great servant. Don't let the road door hit you. Oh, um, get in there. Strong words there by Joe on episode one. <laughs> um, as a very general, though, whether it's Juranovic or Jack and Marcus, I think there's... Four very good reasons to let players go, and I'm going to list them here. So the age profile, of course, comes into, into play. These guys are in their late 20s, and, and you've got to consider that. Kind of going on a par with that is their injury record. So I'd mentioned both have played similar games. I think Jack and Mac has played 57, uh, Juranovic 53. They both missed something close to 20 games through injury. I need to check the finer detail, but they've both missed big chunks of last season and bits of this season, actually, with niggling injuries. Uh, and that's got to come into the thinking. And maybe some of the sports science as well tells Ange that... Got the markers. Listen, maybe, you know, they, a couple of years from now, they'll, they won't be as uh, robust as what they are. Value obviously comes into play. So we're probably selling both at their, their peak time here. You know, every player has a shelf life. Every player has an optimal value. And I don't think this is us maximising our return, basically. I don't think you could sell Juranovic at any other time for what you're getting just now. If you if you hold him for another season, that 7.5 million might be 6 million or 5 million. And you might be the same with Jack and Marcus. So 
there's an optimal time to sell players and Celtic haven't always been good at that. I think that seems that that's the case here. And the final reason, and it's a good one, and it you know, maybe doesn't sit well with some folk, but the player wanting to leave, a desire to leave the building, as much as, you know, it'll annoy some fans, it's part of the game. And if someone doesn't want to be here, then we shouldn't fight too hard to keep him here. Yeah, and he's long on record, you know, almost from day one, you know, along the lines of, you know, I'm not going to sell the club to you. You shouldn't have to be made happy here. Um, if anyone was, was showing, you know, an eye towards the door, it was almost done that very moment, you know, so no problem with that. Um, that that's just how Andrew runs things. I think maybe where most fans who have an issue with it do have an issue is the values are maybe less than we had in our heads. You know, I, I think both those players for those numbers, 10 million and 4 million, 5 million, 4 million, that's that's value. That's real value to get guys of that quality into your squad, you know, from Union Berlin and whoever it may be that gets Jack and Marcus. I had Juranovic about 15 post-World Cup, a strong World Cup, and Jack and Marcus about seven. So maybe there's a wee bit of that surprise, but the, the economics of the day come into it and the market sets the price that you know they've not had the offers of 7 million and 15 million and the economics of the day for Celtic are I can take his wages off I can get paid to do so I can buy that guy who's going to come in in similar wages younger profile more potential everything that goes into that so I think we've done that in Johnson already and I, you know it looks like what's O's 21 who is he? oh the, the green boy yep he's 21, 21. years of age so if we get him in the door yeah. so if he comes in and bangs in 13 goals you know this season or you know 13 plus next year then you've replaced like for like there in terms of the contribution but you've totally changed the profile and the balance sheet and all of these things so if it make if, if the offers are there to make those changes and they're slightly less than you'd, you'd have hoped for you still take them I think Ange had a job to do in his first two transfer windows and it was twofold one was to you know, find a, a balance in the squad in general and bring in some youth players and some or younger players, sorry, and players with potential. But he also had to find seasoned professionals who could come in and Ready do a job yep. straight away yep. and help us win the league. And just spoken about this often enough, coming in last season and competing, you know, and nearly win the league wasn't good enough and, and will never be good enough at Celtic. So he knew he had a job to do to try and win the league. Look at Juranovic, came in, won the league, you'll get four times your money. Jack Amakis comes in, you win the league and you're doubling your money. That makes sense and it's almost... I don't know how planned it was that they would go in this window or, or maybe in the summer, but they've come in, done a job and you sell it a profit. I'm, I'm struggling to see a, a downside of that. And you've replaced with youth. I, exactly that. So you're bringing in a couple of guys who look equally capable, but they're a younger profile. So that's interesting in itself. What we've seen, we've seen it in quite recent history at Celtic, that keeping unhappy players is not a good thing. So we witnessed the pitfalls of that in the, the season that won't be spoken about, uh, to call it that. There, there was decisions made ahead of the 2020-21 season to block any moves for Edward, Chris Iyer and Ryan Christie. I want to be on record, not by Neil Lennon. The one thing Neil Lennon got right was get them out. Yeah, he's spoken about the fact that he thought it was right to move them on yeah. and if a player doesn't he, want he to knows what happy football players do, yeah. yeah. So it seems there that maybe a non-footballing person made a footballing decision, James. Footballing direct. But that's all changed. That's, that's old Celtic. But yeah, you could debate, you know, those three players extensively, if you want, Edward, I or Christie, how happy they were, how under-motivated they were at times. Um, and hindsight's a great thing and all that stuff, but you could just see how they performed during that year. Particularly Edward, if I'd been really uh, frank about it, they just weren't happy. And you've also got to look at the impact of, well, a couple of things. Unhappy players in your first 11, so that's going to impact your results and your performances. It also impacts your dressing room and the overall dynamic. If you're training next to a guy, and you know he doesn't want to be there and he's not in the trenches with you, that's not good for the dynamic overall. And I think you've leaned towards it, James, with Ange Postacoglu, you're either all the way in or all the way out. And I don't think he likes this, you know, half in, half out stuff. And I think that's why Jack and Marcus and Juranovic have been dealt with, you know, in the politest way and replaced pretty swiftly. Yeah. Um, and I have to agree with James as well. With Jack and Mark, uh, there was a lot of discussion about his value and with Juranovic as well. The fact of the matter is, any player's values depends on how much somebody wants you. Yeah. And it comes to the point, do you know what? We paid £2 million for Jackie Marcus and he was a top scorer on the added visa. So we can't really say, oh, we can't really be in a position to say, oh, we want £7 million for him. Because it was, it tore, I mean, I say tore up in Holland. I think his team got relegated that season. But yeah. on paper, you'd be, say, you'd be charging a lot more than £2 million quid. So, yeah, I, I think that the new... The new model that we've got is good and it seems a lot more promising because 
as we say, Edward last season, I thought, or um, uh, two seasons ago, sorry, you could tell with body language straight away. So you could tell with down tools and wanted to leave. I agree. We need to move players on that aren't happy and get, you know, keep the squad balanced and keep it happy and don't disrupt anybody else because I think that's the main thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, depending on what way you look at it, player power is more important now than at any time in the game. And given the salaries some of these guys are on and, you know, things like that, if they want to move, they can generally engineer a move. Who was the latest guy? Was it Trossard that's gone to Arsenal from Brighton? Yes. I just said I want to move. Through his toys yeah. at the plan, refused yeah. to train yeah. <laughs> and basically engineered them. Brighton are well off without him as well, so it's... Everybody wins there. That. But it's kind of the way, you know, the modern game goes to a huge extent. There's some final quotes here from Ange in the matter, and I think, again, it's, it's very accurate stuff. So he says, I said at the AGM, we've just got to be really agile and aggressive in the transfer market if we want to make the gains that we want to make. I get that it's unsettling and disconcerting, particularly particularly for our supporters because they love these players and I totally understand that. But my role is to try and make decisions that I think are best for us and our continued growth as a football team and realising when an opportunity comes along that we have to be ready to take it. And again, it's very smart business by the club. So seeing the Juranovic thing coming down the tracks, it's very proactive by Celtic. And I know that doesn't sit easy with you, James, because you're not used to it. You know, Celtic working I, in I, such I'm a way. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm very open to it. <laughs> yep. So they've been they've seen this, the writing on the wall there. You know, Andrew's maybe had discussions with them. Maybe he wanted to leave in summer, but Celtic have realised that he's going to move on pretty sharp and we need to do something about it. In comes Alistair Johnson, 24 years of age, great profile. Signed on the 12th of December as well, so you're getting him in, he's bedding in in time, and you've signed him for three and a half million pounds. And he's a player who, on initial um, viewing, looks equally as impressive as Juranovic, and overall he's been brought in for a net profit on the Juranovic deal, so it's got to be good business. That's exactly it. You know, I, he's got a wee bit of development to do, but he certainly doesn't look out of place. I think he's, he's forward play is the only place he needs to get a wee bit, you know, more, you know, just tighten up there. Um but the, the invert role will be relatively new to them, as in the amount of inversion we play. I mean, it, he ends up at outside left sometimes, you see him. Um, so maybe just a wee bit more discipline there. But I, I really like him. Um, I think he's going to be a great, a great signing. But this this is the new Celtic all over. You know, we're, we're just doing things differently. And there's obviously some good management going on when the conversations have gone with Jack and Marcus's agent and, and Juranovic's agent. And they're not, you know, going to sustain, you know, it looks like it's a end of discussion, there's going to be a move. They've handled it really well at Celtic. They've they've not went, right, let's let it, you know, stink out the camp and, you know, just cause problems. They've said, right, let's get your move then. What's the move to be? Celtic could have went, no, you're not going for you know seven and a half million. We're, we're going to hold you for your fifteen million that we think you're worth. But they went, no, no, we can use those numbers for, for other things. So I think Celtic, you know, deserve great uh plaudits for, for that side of it alone. And also, you've got to be careful, the last thing of it, you've got to be careful that any player sees that and goes, well, that's how you do it, so I can do it. That's fine. See if you put your head above, you know, Angie's squad and say, I want out. We will manage you out, but look at what you're missing. Yeah. Quote, unquote, Ange says, we're not playing ducks and drakes here, James. Ducks and drakes. Whatever that means. Skimming stones, apparently. (laughs) So, yeah, I think he's... He's got it well under control. I don't think Angie's phased by anything that's going on just now. There's a, a really good quote from Alistair Johnson speaking about Juranovic before he left. So he said, Josip's an unbelievable character. No matter what's been going on behind the scenes, he's a great guy. He's taken him under his wing, which has been really nice of him. He's been the ultimate professional. He comes in, works hard, trains unbelievably well. He's another player I look, look up to. Someone that I think I can take so much from and learn from. And that's just good all round. Fair play to Juranovic for being the consummate professional while he's here. And good luck to Alistair Johnson as he tries to fill his boots. Last question on this one. So we've mentioned that we've got good cover at right back now with Johnson and, and Tony Ralston, obviously behind him. But far less cover up top. So Kyogo's the only genuine number nine left at the club if Giacomacus does move on. Does that concern you first of all, Joe? Not overly, because we, ha- we do have Maeda. And when Maeda played under Angie, played in that role. So it doesn't overly concern me. Um, if we're thinking back to, as I mentioned, that spell with St Johnson away, and it was the 500 fans at McDermott Park, getting Joey Dawson, come on, sort of, I, I, it didn't play badly, but he was a youth player, and sort of thrown in the deep end straight away. Um, we're in a much better position because we've got Maeda, and it's not as if we're taking out someone, It's not ta- we're not taking him out from his wide position as well, because we're stacked out there as well, as it is just now. Um, so I'm not overly concerned, but I want, 
I do want someone in because you never know what can happen injury wise. Yeah, James, if we don't get somebody in, are you happy to ride out the season with Kyogo as your nine and maybe just Maeda as backup? No, you know, and if this podcast goes out any later than half an hour for now, we could be out of date there because it looks like the Korean lad, South Korean lad, is is coming in. So that's your Jack and Marcus cover. I'd love us to get Joe as well in the same window, but even if not, I could handle that, waiting for, wait until the summer for that one. And then we get to the position, Joe, we were talking about where we've got, you know, the two strikers that we've got in Kyogo and Jack and Marcus. You've still got your two strikers in O and Kyogo, and you've got Joe coming in in the summer. And that then gives you your Champions League strike force, and that's where we want to get to. So, nah, I think they've handled it really, really well. James, a lot of O, Cho and Kyogo know, going on there. Uh, I know. I lost you. You lost, you lost me at O, to be honest with you. I kind of blacked out a wee bit myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously you're, you're referencing the, the South Korean striker, O Hyung Yu. Yep. Uh, if I've got that correctly. So Celtic are strongly linked with the 21-year-old and looks like that is imminent. Um, the suggestion is he'll be increasing his salary by 10 times if he makes the move to Celtic. So you can see why it makes a lot of sense from his point of view. Joe, have you caught any clips of him? He seems like a big, powerful lad. He's six foot one, but he's solid and seems a bit of a goal machine and, and very highly rated in his country. I have watched the, the usual YouTube reel or the Twitter reel of the of his highlights and he does look a great player. I've... <laughs> I'm, I, unfortunately, I fell into this trap before where I've watched, I've watched the, I've, I mean, I've watched the Clamalla highlights and thinking, oh, this guy looks brilliant, and I'm trying to be not overly excited by it because I want to see how what he can offer when he comes in. Um, but yeah, so far, from what I've seen, he looked good. Um, it seemed like he was there was a wee bit maybe a interest elsewhere, but looks good. Look, sort of fits the bills of an Ange, sort of striker, maybe. Arguably more than Jack and Marcus would be. Yeah, um, and young at that, twenty one yeah, years of age, definitely. And he's get, he's hopefully he's better years ahead of him. So yeah, um, I, I think it looks good from what I've seen. Yeah, on on Klamala, just a wee kind of Klamala, yeah. He'll earn his uh, more than salary uh, in t- sign sales fees than Jack and Marcus. What do you mean? He went for five million, didn't he? From us to the MLS, yeah. Yeah, that's a and Jack and Marcus and four. Not, not far off. I think. We, we made a profit on him anyway, which is Mad. surprising. Huh? Yeah. Talking about just, you know, watching those YouTube clips and different things, Joe, when Ange came in at first, we had to spend a bit of time catching up on some A League stuff. Yeah. And it was J League with Japan. And now we're having to watch the, the K League. Is that right? Yeah. I, can't, I can't keep up, James. It's too much. But that's, that, that's the great thing about, you know, Celtic's new modern football and ways. You know, we're not looking at idiotic signings for the championship where it's overinflated and guys who are just looking for the money you're bringing motivated guys over for relatively small fees with bags of potential on relatively low wages it's breathtaking how well Celtic of how big a turnaround there has been in the attitude in Celtic since since Ange came in and you know whatever went on upstairs from there yeah, so fingers crossed we get confirmation on O uh, in the coming days and, and we'll see what the rest of the window holds. But best wishes overall to Josip Juranovic and his move to Germany. He's been good for Celtic, Celtic have been good, good for him and we can all now move on. And meanwhile we'll continue to keep a close eye on the Jack and Marcus situation as it unfolds in the coming days. 